now as the head coach at Nebraska after being a walk-on from South Dakota originally. And there's Lisa Bluter, who has just built this thing in Iowa to the cusp of a national championship. And here is Caitlin Clark. You know what? Why not give the fans what they want? And it's an opening missed three, but an offensive rebound. Yeah, Nebraska got lucky there. Just complete miscommunication on who was guarding the nation's leading score. That is not exactly what Amy Williams wanted off the jump. Yeah, she said they actually, her and her staff, spent four hours after their last game breaking down the film of Caitlin Clark. Jazz Shelley with the miss. Yeah, I mean, you have to have an awareness to try to make things as difficult as you can. But Coach Williams also mentioned other players limiting them. She said Sydney Falter, a player who came in and hurt us last game. Kate Martin is so good off the ball there on the drive with the opening two. Yeah, Kate Martin has been playing so well as of late, coming off of back-to-back double-doubles, and you just see the size getting into the lane on the left side. For Nebraska, you don't see Darian White in the starting lineup. She was dealing with a leg injury, was out for the last game. She did practice yesterday as Markowski gets her first bucket to open the scoring for Nebraska. Yeah, there's that matchup we're going to be looking at. Alexis Markowski going to be very physical at 6-3, uses that turnaround to create some space. How do you think Nebraska will deal with Caitlin Clark today? Well, I think they're going to give her different looks. That's not the look that they wanted there. Caitlin Clark with her first three. Yeah, you can't give her that much space, obviously, on the three-point line or even a couple feet out. So there needs to be much closer detail to Caitlin Clark early on. So 36 away. We'll be keeping track of how close she is to the scoring record in the NCAA today. Natalie Potts from the baseline for Nebraska. Nice drive and kick out from Kendall Moriarty setting that up. Getting into the paint and reverse pivoting to find a talented freshman. Clark to the bucket, two and a foul. You have to worry about her passing as we talked about, but there she took it herself. Well, her ability to draw and maintain that contact. This free throw, no three-point play. As you see, 32 points a game. She has five early on here on Super Bowl Sunday. This has the buzz that feels a little Super Bowl-ish today. Who's it off of? Nebraska, it's Iowa ball. Already in peak form. It let the officials know she wasn't happy with that call. But well, we heard about how competitive she is. Oh, that ball is smacked by Stolke, and it's out of bounds off Nebraska. How talented she could be in the post-game presser to her 47-point performance. She was almost surprised that she could do that, but Caitlin Clark told her, I expect this every game now. And we'll see if we get that from Hannah Stolke. It's a travel against Martin for Nebraska. Part of the conversation at practice yesterday was, look, they're going to make late shot clock buckets. They're going to sometimes beat good defense, stay the course. Yeah, and I was capable of going on big runs. High volume shooting team for Nebraska. You just you have to stay in that middle ground of not getting too high or too low within this game. Outstanding freshman Natalie Potts off to Hake, making her fifth career start. She's got Clark on her. They'll switch away. A falter. Three to shoot. Hake on the pitch to the corner to get a late shot clock three, and that won't go down for Potts. There's the hit ahead. Caitlin Clark will throw it 94 feet and a foul against Nebraska. You know that feeling, right? I mean, if there's that camaraderie and togetherness wherever you're opening to see the ball, you do things better, right? Absolutely. There it is. Drive and kick from Caitlin Clark. Got an open look for three. That wouldn't go down for Gabby Marshall. Into the corner it goes, and a held ball for Nebraska. This Nebraska team is 15 and 8. They're 7 and 5 in the Big Ten. They just beat a pretty good Michigan team by six on Tuesday. Yeah, Nebraska a team that's certainly in the conversation to get back to the NCAA tournament. Currently tied for fourth in the Big Ten. 
Iowa at the top of the lead, tied with Ohio State. Caitlin Clark barreling down the lane, and it's blocked from behind. Iowa will keep it, and the Nebraska fans, who might be a little frustrated with all the Iowa sound here, were very noisy. Yeah, that block had to have felt good for Alexis Markowski, who we talked about very adamant about wanting to finally beat Iowa. Uh, she got pretty emotional talking about that volleyball game that she was in attendance for, and you know how much this matters to her. Clark on the pitch, Gabby Marshall misses. The foul wouldn't go for a falter. <laughs> Nebraska has not shot it well early, but hanging around. Moriarty had it tried free by a falter. And Nebraska willing to shrink this game so far. They're bleeding down the shot clock. And we have a whistle away from the ball and a foul. It's on Markowski. That's her first and certainly something to watch there. Yeah, and Nebraska so far, they have not gotten in to their center. Alexis Markowski, I think they play so well through her, even if she's not taking the initial shot, but we have not seen an intent to get it into her in the post and play out of that yet. Maybe out of the first time out, we see that intent. Clark to Stolke for two. <laughs> Opening two for Stolke. Yeah, Stolke just keeps things simple. She stays within herself. One or two hard pounds there. Right to the rack. Well, the shot chart from the last game was ridiculous. 17 makes from basically underneath the basket. Knocked away by Clark and rescued by Caitlin Clark. Iowa so good running the floor and a miss right at the rim by Martin who slammed on the brakes. There it is into the post. Markowski turning and missing. Open floor, here comes 22, stalking her prey. And a wraparound for Stolke, who's fouled. She plays most of the minutes of the game, so I assume even if she's on the bench, the cam follows her? I think so. I heard you are a big TikToker. I know, oh, yeah, so I know you'll be all over that. Yeah, I'm not one of the olds anymore. <laughs> Certainly, free throw is good. Allison, what do you have? Caitlin Clark very vocal in that timeout for Iowa. She's telling her teammates they need to continue to push the ball in transition, lock in defensively. She also said offensively they need to be more intentional setting their screen. She said they're just running through our screens right now. I love Coach Bluter though. She said, guys, you're getting good shots. They're just a little high. Calm down, take a breath. And she wrapped it up with a smile and said, hey, Hawks, this is our house. Ooh, how about that? Oh, my. They have fun. Yeah, they can talk a little too. Bounce pass from Clark. And a beautiful thread through. Just mystical for a falter. Caitlin Clark can have the smallest opening and find a way to get that pass through. Nebraska needed that from Petrie. It wouldn't fall. And Caitlin Clark with the eyes up. Uh, Fearbot, Kylie Fearbot, the junior from the state of Illinois into the ball game. Watch these screens now, what Allison was talking about, if they're more intentional. Martin almost got the roll. If it really were their house, she would have gotten that bounce. Not a bounce to Nebraska. That's a big loss for Nebraska. Yeah, Markowski, obviously their leading scorer and rebounder was huge in the first meeting. But how about Jessica Petrie sliding right into that center spot? And a great find from Jazz Shelley there. Clark on the drive and kick. Martin hard into the lane. She traveled before she got to the rim. Either way, we're going back the other way. Nebraska trying to stay close. Logan Nisley and a travel call as Petrie tried to get into the lane. So turnover, Nebraska was handed a stat from our tremendous statistician Ed Sfida out of the break that Caitlin Clark was on pace for 38 at that moment. She hasn't scored since then. That is all over it. That's the second mention of his name and hopefully the last today. Yeah, it's interesting to see her approach because we mentioned the 15 assists. Nice feed 
into Addie and Brady. But at, at the last home game, 15 assists. But I think sometimes she gets more fired up in these road environments. And we saw her active in her first couple of shot attempts. Down deep, they get a good look that won't go for Coley. Offensive rebound, and they'll reset. That's Shelly, and that's big. Offensive rebounding, going to be an important factor for Nebraska. They lead the Big Ten. They get about 13 offensive rebounds per game. So that's how they're going to look to get some extra possessions. Caitlin Clark lifts it out for three off that step back left. But Jazz Shelly, Five for 11 from three in the opening meeting a couple of weeks ago in Iowa City. Just trying to get away from Fearbach there. That one faded left on her in the rebound of Grady. A pass out of bounds. From Australia, gonna need a big time game in this one. We've heard that her parents are going to the Super Bowl today. A big day for the Shelley family as Darian White misses that shot. They're going to the Super Bowl that's, from here? That's what we were told uh, earlier, that they are at the Super Bowl and likely watching somewhere uh, away from here at Nebraska, though they typically oh, so they're are. not here. No, they're not. They're at okay. the Super Bowl, but watching say, us. Wow, that would be impressive to hit both games in one day. It would be, like <laughs> sort of like Taylor Swift here at a concert to get into the Super Bowl. O'Grady, turn around. It rolled out. Hard drive from Haig on the drop off mid lane and Markowski, who they need even with two fouls in the game. Yeah, Coach Amy Williams feeling the need to put her back in. Callan Haig, nice job of pushing pace in transition to find her center. White trying to heat up Caitlin Clark and she takes that personally. Two more, seven for Caitlin Clark in the first quarter. And Amy Williams talked about making things difficult for Caitlin Clark. That was just too easy. Somebody has to step up and meet her earlier in the paint. White on a nice find of the wraparound pass. And here comes a little full court pressure from the Huskers for the first time today as they're feeling a little more energetic right now. The crowd's getting into it as well to slow this offense down a little bit. Caitlin Clark, no red light on the shot clock. It's hers right now, 10 to shoot in the first quarter. This is why they bought the tickets. Off we go, Clark jams on the brakes. Fires and left it short, the foul tip won't fall, and Nebraska is within three. the offensive end going forward, especially attacking the offensive board. Well, we need to move the ball and move bodies. Move the ball and move bodies. I think in our quest to try to find more paint touches ourselves, we've really been sticking the basketball and putting it above our head and staring inside, and we've just got to move the ball, move bodies. Amy, thanks. Thanks, Mike. They got it inside right there. It's batted out of bounds by Nebraska. A little bit better of a possession there in terms of moving the ball. Yeah, and like I said earlier, I think their offense is at its best when they are playing through Alexis Markowski in the post. I'd still like to see them feed it into her because she commands so much attention and frees things up on the perimeter. Iowa goes right to Stolke, knowing Markowski has two fouls. Couldn't really do anything about it. Yeah, and Stolke is so strong, athletic, and explosive. They're going to have to just rethink that Alexis Markowski defending her if she's trying to protect the foul. So two there to make it a three-point game for Potts. And a save at the end line that the crowd was not thrilled with. And a travel call against Martin. A couple of travels called on Martin now. She's just been a touch sped up. Hake found an open Potts who missed it. And there's Shelley flying in for the rebound to set up Hake who missed it for three in the top. Clark seven points in the first quarter, five in the first two minutes. And there, off the curl, she fires and misses right. Stolke rips it back in bounds, beautifully done. And Lisa Bluter talked about the importance of rebounding for her team in this one. Sydney, a factor, just tough to the bucket. But Lisa Bluter said, even though they won that first meeting, it was tight at times. She did not like their performance on the glass. So a better attention to that this afternoon. 
certainly something as you heard from Amy Williams on her mind. The rebounding action that got deep into the post, but a miss for Potts. Marshall to a cutting Clark who missed it right on the doorstep. Eight for White, pull up three. Would have been enormous for Nebraska. Always looking to run. Clark on the cross court five. It's a falter. What a pass from Caitlin Clark to see again that smallest opening to be able to feed that through cross court perfectly placed into the shooting pocket. He's probably going to see some milestone today. She's two assists from a thousand for her career. Potts goes to the floor, and this could be five on four, but it's taken away by Shelley. And a big bucket for Nebraska. Great hands by Jazz Shelley. Getting up there in the passing lane, active hands. A falter playing high low. Kick out, Stolke missed it. And a rebound for White. Taken right on the hands of Shelley. Beautifully done by Marshall. Uh, Gabby Marshall has more than 200 steals in her Iowa career. That was an easy one, just right into her hands. There is certainly no reins on what she can choose to do as she dances down the lane and finds Stolke just thinning out the defense. And that's where you see her danger, right? She can get her own shot and then she can get into the paint, force the defense to shift and find Hannah Stolke. That's how Hannah Stolke got a ton of those 47 points last game. 17 of 20 from underneath the basket. Two for Petrie, she has four as Caitlin Clark is one assist shy of 1,000 for her career. Will it be here? She starts her engine and drives and tries to score, tips it out, and Nebraska on the run. Shelly to crawl. Offensive rebound put back for Logan Nisley, the freshman, and once again a four-point game. Yeah, Nebraska has really started to get some second chance points now, up to seven. Iowa has to locate and box out. Caitlin Clark drills a three out of nowhere sometimes. Yeah, she can just be so casual. Looking like she's just kind of surveying the offense and then pulls the trigger. Oh, the response from Nisley. Okay. Anything you can do. And a foul call on the drive. It's against Shelly. That's her second personal. Fearbach threw it away. Intercepted by Coley. to believe Caitlin Clark won't be on the bench for long if Nebraska mounts a rally here. Coley for Nisley. Missed that one and the save ricocheted around to Iowa. Look out. Gabby Marshall had to do the high hurdles there. And that wouldn't fall for Molly Davis into the ball game. Yeah, Molly Davis has, we're told, not been feeling very well at all. Only played a couple minutes in the last game. Makes her debut. Stolke hits the deck. Nebraska. It's pretty incredible. You mentioned her playing as, as a young girl. She played with the boys, though, because you couldn't find a girls team for her. What attributes of her game do you still see? <laughs> I would say just the competitiveness, the assertiveness. Um, she's very creative, you know, had to be at a young age. She was kind of a marked player even then, if you can imagine. So it's just a lot of fun. And I know you have a lot of people here supporting her. Tell me about playing in Nebraska for Caitlin. She seems to thrive against this team, and a lot of people here watching and cheering her up. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Obviously, we've got a lot of family that lives in the Omaha area, so I think that that's certainly a factor. Um, you know, some teams you're just maybe a little more comfortable with as you play them, and we've played them. This might be game eight or nine, probably, in the series. So she's obviously ha had some really good games, and I hope it continues today. She's obviously chasing a record, the scoring record for NCAA women's basketball. How do you think she's handled all of that? 
incredibly well. Um, I mean, who wants to play in front of a thousand people in a 15,000 seat arena? So for her, I think it's just everything she could ever imagine. She seems to be handling it all so well, and we look forward to a great performance the rest of the game here. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. Great to meet you. Jason. Here comes Brent's daughter, who just left it in the corner. That would have to be a hockey assist. It won't be. It's two for Stolke in Iowa. Back in the points column after a little bit of a drought. But thanks to Brent for spending the time with us. Yeah, really cool. And just Hannah Stolke there. We've seen her confidence grow. I saw her early in the season. She didn't go up strong like the way we're seeing her do in the last couple of weeks and games. You can see the pride of confidence growing in that press conference after the Penn State game. Caitlin Clark up for two. That is 12 for Clark so far today. She had a little something to say after that one, too, to one of the defenders. That's how she plays, though, all the time. <laughs> that's, that's how life is for Caitlin Clark, right? I mean, it's just a competition in every way. And talking to Lisa Bluter, she said, look, I, the way you push Caitlin Clark's buttons is by saying she can't do something. Pots around the baseline. Five to shoot for Nebraska. And a foul call. Hit to the foul line, and she misses the free throw. Second one is good for Kendall Moriarty from the Chicago suburbs and Bennett Academy. She's been getting the line quite a bit in recent days as we have a whistle and a kickball. And I still think Nebraska has to do a better job of trying to defend Caitlin Clark, even though that wasn't really a full transition. It was kind of a secondary break, and they are just letting her weave into the paint. They have to do a better job of trying to keep her in front. How do you do that? Move your feet, be ready to help early, instead of it being too late when she's already in the middle of the paint. This is out of bounds, and it's off of Iowa. So that thousandth assist has been rather elusive so far. I, she knows, though, and we've, we've heard her say it, that it's, it's not an if, it's a win. And so the way she's wearing it, even though she's highly competitive, as Dad said, there could be a lot she's internalizing, but it seems like, and you've followed her a ton this year, seems like she's dealing with it in a very positive way. Yeah, and I think she can play freely knowing that half court, it was like football, you were either on offense or defense. Jazz Shelley got it for three. Fantastic execution out of a somewhat timeout because of the officials' review, and that was a big one to open things up here for Nebraska. Kate Martin barreling down the lane. She's walled off, so Caitlin Clark triggers. And the pulls out. And you cannot get too deeply into the paint and forget about where Caitlin Clark is on the perimeter. 15 for Clark. Jess Shelley has a comment on that. Shelly versus Clark, double team. Hey. Who cares? <laughs> Shelly and Clark just cleared out. Let them go one on one for a few possessions. I mean, why not? Into the post. That's two for Natalie Potts. Wow, Nebraska is playing really confidently right now. I think they've picked up their pace. Their rhythm looks better offensively. 17, that one from the state line. And she's going to hear about it from some folks here in Lincoln. I thought they would let her hear it a bit more. I thought she, they'd be a bit more volatile. I was going to say, she <laughs> may hear it later as that one pinballs around to the sideline and saved nicely by Stolke. Clark fires it down low, and that's number 1,000 in the assist column, and an absolute rocket off her hand. Only one of six NCAA women's players to hit 1,000 career assists. Caitlin Clark now on that list. This crowd together can't decide what it wants. And a foul call against a falter. 
So no chance for a final possession for Iowa if Nebraska now plays its cards right after the foul. And we get a travel, so they will get a final touch here. Look who's coming back in. How about that? <laughs> she was at the bench. She was up ready to check in before the whistle had even been blown. She knew she was ready. Kim, where do you think this ball is going on this possession? Maybe to the soon-to-be nation's leading scorer. But I wouldn't be surprised if she gives it up real quick here, if she if she gets a dime. They deny. She gets it anyway, right down the middle. As you said, to a falter, it's a miss. Exactly right. You've watched a lot of this basketball, haven't you, Kim? Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. I think I would have just played on. Marcowski with three fouls. Martin to help defense to really make it treacherous. Missing. Top shot fake. Got by Clark and missed it. Tipped out to Caitlin Clark. Kicking her way down the lane. Just dancing on the dribble. She waved off the screen and then Kroll picks up the foul. And she can certainly fill it up quickly. Just turn that switch up. We hear the energy in the arena picking up. Even if it's against her, you're almost just waiting for her to personally respond to that. How competitive is she? <laughs> Extreme levels. I mean, you see how she kind of gets into it with the officials sometimes. She feeds off of the crowd. I think she's in a top tier of that competitiveness. Scores. Tough turnaround. Alexis Markowski doubling into, dribbling into the defense and then turning around to get the space. And there's the pick your poison, right? Caitlin Clark finding O'Grady across the lane. I think that is maybe what's most impressive. She's leading the nation in scoring and assists. There's only one other player who's done that in Division I basketball, and that's Trey Young. That is just a wild set of company to keep. Tough shot for Markowski, and it's out of bounds to Nebraska. Worst year of college basketball as she inches closer to Miss Kelsey Plum. Down to her one total as well, and then the step through while we're at it. Of the game, she's playing both ends. That's a three for Nisley. She's hit a couple today and now in double figures. Yeah, we know a lot about Natalie Potts, the freshman. Logan Nisley, very talented as well. Three-time North Dakota Gatorade Player of the Year. Catch for Martin. Taken away by Markowski. Shelly to the wing. Crawl missed it for three. And the rebound for Nisley, who spots up again. And that one just short. That's going to be a foul against Coley and Nebraska. That sometimes it does seem that opposing players will take wilder shots because of the Caitlin Clark effect. And Lisa Bluter, when Allison asked, didn't exactly confirm or deny it, but she definitely didn't deny that. Allison, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I was intrigued by it because you watch these games play against Iowa and they just take some uncharacteristic shots. And so I asked Bluter about it and she laughed and she's like, yeah, that would be take and make. But she said that you do see it. It's a little bit of this, well, if she can do it, I can do it mentality that can get in players' heads. A great point watching film, Allison, is you, you see it as there's Martin faking a three on the kick down low. And that's two for the Iowa Hawkeyes and Hannah Stolke. This is the three-point rate against Iowa. Five straight makes for Iowa. And Stolke is fouled. And it was Coley trying to find the basketball. Called for her second quickly. Both Iowa and Ohio State, neither of those teams have an easy road to their their meeting. That game right here on Fox. Free throw no good for Stolke, so Nebraska gets a big empty set there. Here is Jazz Shelley, who so far has 13 points on 5 of 10 shooting. Marshall 
Russell was right there with her. Markowski got it for three. You said it. Find her. They have in a big second half for Alexis Markowski, the Lincoln native. Well, I didn't expect them to find her on the perimeter. That is back to back threes for the center setting the screen. Both players go with the ball handler, pop out and knock down. Coley trying so hard to deny Caitlin Clark, and she won't be denied. Coach Amy Williams is furious right now, telling the officials to call the push off. She is livid on the sideline. That was a wrestling match to get the ball. It's rejected. Stolke involved once again. Think of how many young ladies are in attendance today who are going to play like Caitlin Clark. Still, or want to. Yeah, well, still should practice your layups and free throws and then back it up to the logo. Martin trying to throw it inside, taken by Markowski. 12 in the quarter for Caitlin Clark, but Iowa can't shake Nebraska yet. To the corner, and White misses strong. Clark out of the fray. Turned the defense into traffic cones for a minute. She went her way looking for teammates on the kick. She found Martin, and that is the danger. You crash on Clark, and Martin fills it up. Absolutely. We've seen a couple times now where Clark gets deep in the paint, the defense collapses, and her teammates making Nebraska pay on the perimeter. End of the post, turning shot, Markowski, no, and it's going to Iowa for now. Let's see, they're going to talk it over. White pull up. That's good. Nice read from Darian White off of the ball screen. Defense sunk low. She pulls up. This is not a score where you can maneuver the points that you want as Caitlin Clark is fouled by Shelly and two free throws coming for Clark. But she is livid. She is over these reach-in fouls that are being called on Caitlin Clark. Another is there. And with the technical, it's Iowa's choice. No good. Wow. Okay. Even the inflatables are highly engaged today. Martin, hard dive and two. How good is Kate Martin at moving without the ball and cutting right to the rim? You hear coaches say cut to score. Kate Martin does that to a T. It's the eighth assist for her roommate, Caitlin Clark. 14 point game on the kick. That's in the corner for Haik. It won't go. Caitlin Clark, no shot clock, just Darian White in her periscope. Seven to go. Double comes. Martin down low. Stolke taken away downstairs. And we have a travel against Nebraska. That was Hake down there. Inbound to Stolke. She got it up. No whistle. And that is the end of three. like a silent current in this arena right now, knowing that this is very much so within reach for Caitlin Clark. Eight points for the record. Step through Moriarty, and as Nebraska stays close, that raises the chances that the folks here will see history. Oh yeah, Nebraska is not gonna go away in this game in front of their sold out crowd. A talented team. into that dribble, and she finds Stolke again. Beautiful look one more time. Those two have really been growing a connection across this season as Caitlin Clark was so used to playing with Monica Sinano for three seasons. Well, now those two really on point with where each other are going to be. 
career triple doubles for Caitlin Clark. 31 points, nine assists, six rebounds so far. Four steals, two blocks. The partridge in the pear tree as well. Moriarty misses, and it's out of bounds. What we do know is everywhere she goes, she sets a record in terms of people watching. And as Allison reported off the top, they've come from three, four states away for birthday presents and holiday presents and everything, Christmas presents. As that turnaround is good for Natalie Potts, and Nebraska is going to make a game of this or try. Dump down for Marshall. Knocked away, scooped ahead by Markowski. Moriarty catch and shoot. It was online and too strong. They have to obviously keep an eye on 22, but Kate Martin has been really strong as well. And then I think what Lisa Bluter said about Iowa applies to Nebraska as well in terms of their shot selection. I'd love to still see Markowski get more involved in this game. They went to the opposite side of Caitlin Clark there. That is a miss for Martin and Iowa. Missley certainly shoots it well. The freshman guard from North Dakota, very decorated high school player, as you mentioned earlier. Nice pass by Markowski. And another three that just won't go down for Nebraska and Jazz Shelley, and we got to travel. Candidate for Big Ten freshman of the year, keeping that play alive. And this one, too, and the foul. Certainly a front runner for the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Great size, great rebounding ability. Trying to keep her team in this one. Caitlin Clark for Martin. And we'll get a foul against Nebraska. But if she gets involved in a game, you might see Caitlin Clark play on the ball more. Yeah, this is still, you know, this is way too tight of a game to be thinking, let's take out. Caitlin to do it at home. This is a this is a winning situation where they want to stay at, at the top of those Big Ten standings. Markowski double came. She steps through it and just left it short. Caitlin Clark in a hurry on the wraparound. Man, it was on Stolke's hands fast, and the rebound to Nebraska out of bounds. Three, four defenders. Stolke wide open. In the Penn State game, when she had 47, she was fully ready to catch and make those layups. Last time out Thursday, 111 points for the Iowa Hawkeyes in their 22nd win of the year. Nebraska fans getting loud. Shelly, ball fake and pass to the corner. Nothing there because of the defense by a falter. And Nebraska's bench with Moriarty going to the ground, is rather happy about the push. With the Nebraska player coming out of bounds. What happened Cox? She has really come on here in the last couple of minutes, moving without the basketball, cutting hard, finishing strong. Natalie Potts. Caitlin Clark, step back into a three. That's short. A falter, the rebound, and timeout Lisa Bluter. It's just surreal, the impact that really one player is having, but we know that it's going to have a waterfall effect over women's basketball as a whole. In the early fall, 55,000 plus, Nebraska obviously with that volleyball game back in 2023, which was such a spectacle that the players have talked about and Amy Williams has talked about. And Iowa has missed six straight shots. It's an eight-point game. Yeah, Lisa Bluter talked to Allison about shot selection. That was a little bit of a wild one there. Nice yeah. clap for Moriarty from Markowski at six. Nebraska is not going away, not backing down from the number two Hawkeyes. Martin. Big shot, Kate Martin. Interesting, no reaction there from Lisa Bluter. Like, maybe that was a little bit early in the shot clock, but they did knock that one down, finally, for Iowa. Caitlin Clark at 12-point third quarter. She has not scored here in the fourth. 
That for Jazz Shelley was necessary and immense. I would keep putting those two in a ball screen. Jazz Shelley, Alexis Markowski, they can really find some good looks when you put those two in action together. Even Clark is trying to free up Kate Martin. It was not there. Clark has not seen the ball. They're playing away from her. This out of bounds. It's Nebraska ball. Nebraska actually went to a triangle and two defense there. Six-point game, four minutes to go in Lincoln. Gold Big Red surrounds the visiting Hawkeyes. It's a foul on Martin on the pot drop. Well, she had a little bit of success in high school. Her school won their final 100 games she played in. <laughs> That's it's, insane. I mean. Incarnate Word Academy, St. Louis. Hawks is good. Nebraska has never led, but we're closing in on that. Iowa had a 14-point lead and has shrunk to four. Ooh, an entanglement and a foul on Markowski. That's her fourth personal. Caitlin Clark lets it fly. That's no good. And the rebound for Nisley in Nebraska. Caitlin Clark 0 for 3 in the fourth quarter. Markowski! Six missed it strong. Caitlin Clark ahead of the field, as she has been for the majority of her career. Martin cross court from Clark. What a pass. And what a shot. Kate Martin has been money in this game at clutch moments. She is up to 20 points with that triple. She's been in this program for so long. She's seen it through 2019 to this year. Basically can't get free. She's going to try anyway. Oh, my goodness! Logan Nisley, 13 points. Something about these freshmen, zero hesitation. Martin Denai, taken away. Iowa wants a foul, won't get it. Suddenly, the walls are coming very close to the Iowa Hawkeyes right now in a four-point game. Yeah, we've seen Iowa in these positions before, that Ohio State upset. They were up big late, that one got away. This is going to be Nebraska basketball. Special afternoon here in Lincoln. And Nebraska trying to make it even more of a gift for their fans. Clark is called for a foul on a three-point opportunity. From the nation's leading scorer, fouling a three-point shooter in a tight game. I mean, she's, she's very convincing, but Caitlin Clark very clearly Got Logan Nisley right across the arm in the shooting motion. Very fitting that no, uh, Logan Nisley would be at the line right now as she was the volleyball player of the year in the state of North Dakota in 21 and 22. She makes two of the three. It's a two point game. Caitlin Clark has not scored in the fourth quarter. Martin rips it to Marshall. That's no good. Rebound taken by Markowski, and Nebraska can lead for the first time with a three. Suddenly, game pressure on Iowa, and the Hawkeyes invite pressure. They say it's a privilege. They've got what they want right now. Potts, too strong. Well defended by Kate Martin, staying vertical. Discipline without a foul. Clark wants the ball. She wants to score. She misses. Rebound for Potts. Shelley has hunted shots today. That's deflected and taken by Stokey, who's fouled. That's just three on Nebraska in the fourth quarter. Clark on the ball. It's Martin. Front iron. 
And another quick shot. A quick shot with the lead with probably about 20 seconds on the shot clock. The record that matters right now is in the bottom left rather than the top left. Missed the freshman to Jazz Shelley. Into the post it goes Markowski. Shelley, a fight for the ball. Shelley, that's good! The first lead for Nebraska with 30 seconds to go! So all that Jazz gives Nebraska a one-point advantage, and here's Caitlin Clark. And it looks like they may look... A shot from forever is no good, and the rebound for Nebraska. To start this nine-game run, tough inbound. Shelley's got it. Jen Shelley swatted at and fouled. Marshall didn't think she made contact. It was right in front of us. Uh, yeah, that was interesting because Iowa was clearly giving it a chance to get a steal out of the trap, and I didn't think there was any contact yet. It literally right in front of us. I, I don't think they fouled yet. They weren't trying to foul yet, and, and they had her trapped in a really good spot to try to get a steal out of it. Seeing this through, two free throws for Shelley. Let a couple ticks off. They just cannot foul in the shooting motion. Especially when the three certainly yeah. get this thing in, and they do. Stalky late cuts in for two. In front of Shelley, she's fouled. Nebraska was looking for a five second call there. It was close. Shelley, big shot. Kate Martin on the inbound. Looks like they're trying to get something on the perimeter. A couple options are a no-go. Hannah Slokey cutting right to the block. I know, I know there are Nebraska fans who counted 1-1000 to 5-1000 <laughs> there, but that is certainly not reviewable in a timeout. Where we are to the defense, it's into Martin. Shelley is on Clark, trying to deny, and Clark is met and fouled by Potts. So there's the foul to give, 9.5 to go. Inbound, tough catch for Martin. Caitlin Clark with five for the tie. It's no good. Rebound down mid lane. Out to Martin. No! And a record crowd watches a historic upset.